Welcome back to another episode of Inside Dobe. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, obviously, went to the Blues Hawks game on Sunday, so I didn't get enough time to go back and watch all the games um, as well as work. So I had to make sure I pushed it back an extra couple of days so I had enough time to go through and look at all the games. Can't believe we're already three rounds in to this season. Uh, Thursday night football, which feels like a lifetime ago. Uh, we have the Swans and the Bulldogs. Uh, the Doggies getting the job done. Look, the Swans were obviously very happy with their first two rounds of footy because they decided to pack it in in that second quarter, not scoring a point at all. And that obviously was a massive factor coming in towards the, uh, the rest of the game. The Dogs midfield were huge. Dunkley, Smith, Hunter... Bailey Dale and Trelaw between them had 144 touches, 15 clearances, and 2,374 meters gained. Now I did have Haney for two snags. He did, he, he would have kicked the other one, but he gave the other one over the top to Bud. Uh, the multi would have hit, but unfortunately it didn't. And also the translucent crayfish, big Timmy English. He was unbelievable. Uh, the number one fantasy player on the ground, and he's looking very firm to being his very first time as an All-Australian Ruckman. He was everywhere. The big Tim covers the ground like no one else. Uh, he's pretty much like another midfielder in that dog side. Um, I thought the Swans were going to spank the dogs. The dogs really clawed back. Uh, they got a really good win. Bont stood up late. Uh, great win by the doggies. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go again this week. Now, on Friday night, you had Melbourne versus Essendon. Uh, the first half of this game was honestly one of the hardest games to watch. Every team was missing uh, very easy set shots throughout the game. Uh, but as we all expected, the Bombers would eventually shit the bed and the Ds would get the W. Uh, Clayton Oliver and Angus Brayshaw were huge. Ed Langdon plays that far side of the wing better than any other wingman in the game. Um, I was actually chatting to someone. I said, I'm pretty sure he doesn't come off. And then I saw a post last night on the AFL Central. So far this year, he has played 100% of game time since being on the field. He just goes over that far side and plays it unbelievably. And his goal will be goal of the year. I believe it was like Paddy Bowden's on that side, the Czech side that went through. Unbelievable goal. Uh, the Ds, even though they played terrible, just looked like they would just... They were always going to get that done in the very end. Now, I've had a few people tell me that they think I've been a little bit harsh on the Bombers. Look, they've played Geelong, they've played Brisbane, and now Melbourne. And look, guess what? They're still 0-3. So until they start winning, I will still be extremely harsh on the Bombers. Look, they're coming. They're playing the Crows this week, who are very hot off a very good showdown win. Uh, look, I believe it's the first time since 1968 the Bombers have been 0-3. But get ready to pencil in 0-4 because the Crows are coming in extremely hot. Now, that was the other game on Friday night. That was an absolute cracker. Uh, what a comeback. With 10 minutes to go, 10 minutes to go, Port were up by 18 points. With 5 minutes to go, they were up by 13 points. Look, how don't you just plug this one up, Ken? Like, you've got it you've got it sealed, you're running all over them, and you just let them back in the game. Now, I love Travis Boak, one of my favorite players. He had a shot that you would think he would make 9 out of 10 times uh, with under 2 minutes to go to ice the game. He happened to miss it. They let them back in the game. They come down the field. Trent McKenzie goes back with a flight, takes an unbelievable mark with a minute to go, and yet they still happen to get the ball back. They bring it out to the wing. They get another stoppage. And then we have enter Sam Mays for arguably the second dumbest play of this year. All right, we had James Stewart the other week. I said he didn't rush them behind and then Brisbane end up taking it up the field and end up icing the game against the Bombers. But Sam Mays, there is literally three seconds left. Okay, you have Lachlan Murphy running in. He didn't even take possession of the ball and he's taken his head absolutely clean off. All he had to do was stand there. He wasn't going to get it to another player. He had to stay there, body him, but no, he's decided to take his head off and he's hit him that bad that not only could he not take the kick, but they've given it to the best kick in the team, the best kick in Adelaide, Jordan Dawson, that went back and kicked one of the most clutch shots after a siren, not naming Jack Nunes because Nunes was a little bit deeper, a little bit more further to the right. But this was an unbelievable goal. Started so far out right. Swung in. Adelaide get the job done. Port Adelaide, the pressure is absolutely building on them. Ken Hinckley would have the tightest sphincter right now because I'll tell you what, he's on the hottest of seats. Couple more losses and he will be gone out of that franchise, out of that club before the halfway through this season. Mark my words. 
Um, the next game, we had GWS and Gold Coast. Uh, the Giants getting the job done by 26 points. Uh, Tim Taranto, Canelio, and Tom Green continue in their great form. Uh, look, finally, a team put some work into Tuke Miller. He's been getting averaging about 30 disposals for the good part of a year now. They put some work into him with DeBoer and a few others. He only had 17 touches, didn't have too much of an impact. Uh, that could be a really big blueprint going forward, I believe, to stopping Gold Coast. Mind you, they don't win that many games anyway. But I feel stop Tuke. They didn't get a lot of run going. And GWS got the job done easy. Just when are Gold Coast going to start turning it around? The amount of picks, all the players, they're just still a terrible, terrible club. Uh, you really feel for the supporter base and play and fans like Matt Dickey. I mean, when are you going to see some success? But you got them and the Bombers, so very feel very bad for you, my friend. Uh, the next game, Collingwood and Geelong. Now, if there's something I love seeing a little bit more than the Bombers losing, it's seeing Collingwood absolutely shit the bed. Now, they had the lead and they could not stop a nosebleed towards that last quarter. Uh, the Cats seem to be sticking to their game plan. They said even if they get into a bit of a rut, they will continue to play that fast pace of football. And eventually, it really did come to the front. Uh, Jeremy Cameron is one of the most exciting players to watch once he gets going. Obviously, he had a massive last quarter. But Jack Givenen, Givenen, is that how you pronounce his last name? Look, he had the camera at the start of the um, when they won the, the Saints game. Then he's decided to cut his hair. Now, he's come on, he's kicked a goal that got handed to him. He's carrying on like he's won the grand final off his own boot. Mate, you've had six touches for the game. Even Luke Dalhouse had more touches than you. He had seven touches. And you know how I think about Luke Dalhouse. So focus on getting the footy a little bit more, pal. Uh, look, Nick Dacos was unbelievable. To think it's only his third game of AFL football is ridiculous. He had another 26 touches and a goal. Um, he also had his first AFL Rising Star nomination. Probably could have had it round one as well. Uh, you'd like to think that he has that award already wrapped up. But the Geelong guns were far too good down the stretch. Uh, Tommy Stewart, Danger, and Jeremy Cameron were elite in that game. Uh, the next one, Brisbane and North. I will not touch on this for too long. North are the worst team in the AFL, not naming West Coast. Okay, They are disgustingly bad. They have no game plan. I don't know what they're looking at. <laughs> they're just guys ball hunting. No one gets anything forward to center. It is the Lions absolutely ran all over the top of them. Lions end up winning 156 to 48, which is an absolute spanking. If you're a North fan, I would feel absolutely disgusted. Now, the Sunday slate, this game was unbelievable. I was there. Blues and the Hawks. Crazy. So I've been to a lot of Carlton games where I'm on the other side of the fence of these losses. And the fact that we were able to hold on was incredible. Now, I went the early crow. We were up 43-9 to nine at quarter time. I thought it was going to be 100 points. It wasn't. It ended up only being a point. But how could you not think it was going to be 100 points at the start of the game? You had all the big guns firing. You had Mackay. You had Kerno. Cripps all kicking goals, all marking inside 50 early, and all hitting the scoreboard. Now, look, we just couldn't get good looks after quarter time. Um, the inside 50s weren't great, and the Hawks' defense and rebounding were incredible. Uh, Jath and Sicily were amazing down back, while Gunston and Bruce really tore us a new one um, after quarter time, pretty much. They are two professional goal kickers, and they always seem to have an impact when they get down the stretch in those big games. Uh, but we held on. The Suv, Big Jack Silvani, uh, he was incredible. He kicked three. Uh, look, and he's been playing the hardest role in the AFL for a good part of the last two to three years. The high half forward at Carlton, pinch hitting in the ruck. Now, we've had a lot of injuries up forward where Mackay maybe not have been playing or Kerno's obviously been out for a long time. So, big Jack Silvani has been taking one of the best defenders per game, having to play up the ground, and good to see him finally get some flowers. But as I said last week, the Blues mids are the best in the league, and it is not even close. I'll die on this hill all year. Walsh had 32, Cripps had 31, Kennedy had 30, uh, Hewitt had 28, uh, and of course Sam Doherty with the best on ground performance with 33 disposals. Um, he was coming off the back of the square after every center clearance, was almost like another midfielder for us, very attacking. Uh, and also Jacob Wiedering, the best fullback in the AFL, was on full display uh, with a big match saving mark and going back with a flight. He was incredible. Look, there are no style points in this league. Uh, glad to get the four points. We are 3-0, and firming to finish inside the top four, as I predicted. Um, 
We have the Suns with this week, so looking forward to another big W. I believe that we will be 4-0 after Sunday's game with the Gold Coast Suns. Now, Saints and Tigers, which was the other game on the Sunday. If there's something that I like seeing more, more than Essendon and Collingwood losing, it is seeing also the Tigers absolutely shit the bed. The Saints comeback was absolutely elite. Max King is box office. He's played two to three good quarters of footy so far this year, and he's equal second in the Coleman medal, only one behind Larky, I believe, who's on 10. King and a few others are on nine. When he gets going, Max King, he's almost virtually unstoppable. Unstoppable, sorry. He's reached the footy. I feel no one can spoil him. And he's now my new favorite to win the Coleman medal. Uh, he's in for a massive year. Uh, he'll be the king of kings by the end of the season. I love seeing the big forwards kick goals. I believe that he will be uh, getting a lot more entry point compared to the Blues. I feel we're going to share around uh, a lot more. So King will get a lot more looks at goal individually. So he's my new firming favorite to win the Coleman medal this season. And then we have the last game of the round. No one cares about these two teams, West Coast and Fremantle. I believe West Coast are now regarded or pretty much as exact same as the Suns were the first year they came into the league. No one thinks that they're going to win a game. No one cares about them, who plays them. Uh, look, Freo obviously getting the job done. Uh, again, Andrew Brayshaw had another 26 disposals. Uh, they finally get some help up forward with Matt Taberner coming in and kicking three. Michael Frederick kicked two. And then Schultze, I believe, won the medal for best on ground. I love Schultze. I love betting on him, on him for a snag. Really crafty down forward. Um, Freo hopefully can start to get the ball rolling a little bit now that they're still getting some people back in. But that's what was round three of football. Um, some predictions coming into this week. I believe Melbourne get it done against Port again. Oh, I love seeing a train wreck. Uh, the Blues have been a train wreck for a good part of a decade or two decades. So now the Porter on one, I'm going to bash them. I hope that they continue to keep on losing. I'm on the Ken Hinckley out before the end of this or before halfway through this season. So I hope Melbourne absolutely bash them. I believe Brisbane get it done against the Cats. Uh, I believe the Bombers will shit the bed again against Adelaide. Look, I believe it's in Melbourne. And the Crows are looking a little bit hot at the moment. Uh, they just lost to Frio round one. They'll be coming in with a lot of confidence. The only thing I do want to see with the Bombers, though, is Jakey Stringer kick a bag. I do love the package. I love when he gets up and about. And I also believe that the baggers will get it done very convincingly at Metricon because it won't be night time. So hopefully the ball won't be as dewy. Um, make sure we get on, especially for the 100K as well. We were only a few legs off this week. Make sure if you're not getting on all of our bets, from the whole uh, Saturday and Sunday slate. Look at our small individual bets because that's where the boys are definitely cleaning up. Uh, that is another episode for Inside Dobe. Sorry for the delay. I'll be making sure I'm back onto it a little bit earlier next week. Hey, let's have a hell of a week and let's go.